Revenant Esports is one of the most illustrious and successful esports orgs in our country. Their success has been fueled through the passion of their management and CEO and they've become one of the fastest growing esports orgs in India. An org that has resonated with discipline, which is actually what made them stand out in the first place across every single esport that they fielded a roster in, especially Valorant. But from what we've seen since their inception till now, is it actually time to ask? Is this really the end of Revenant Esports' Valorant journey? Before we answer this, let's have a look at their story so far. Their journey started way back when Revenant was not into PC Esports but were primarily a mobile gaming org. Rohit Jagasia, the CEO, wanted to venture into Valorant and with a little help from his friends, around the scene, Revenant's infamous journey in Valorant began. They picked up the god particle prodigies of Skargor, Logista, Nitrator, and Ember and Wimp from EXO to lead. It was a prodigious roster with a lot of potential and RNT was actually doing pretty decent until a certain point. They were able to establish themselves quickly as one of the top four in India, consistently being able to finish fourth or better in their initial few tournaments with one of the best early finishes being second at the TEC Challenger Series 7, losing only to Velocity Gaming. They were a young squad who did their best to give the top dogs a run for their money, but unfortunately, it wasn't the case to be at the biggest stage, the Sky Esports Championship Series. They were looking good before going into the tournament and were considered to be the giant killers, but it just didn't click at SCS. They went 3-2 and two in their group and actually almost barely made it through to the playoffs with just a few rounds in hand to spare. And right off the bat, yet again, the only team they used to struggle against when it came to experience, they had to face off against VLT. A slapping two was sent them to the lower brackets where then they met Global Esports, the eventual winners of the tournament. Whilst very minute mistakes from RNT led a very, very close match to end up in the hands of GE, it was a disappointing loss nonetheless that ended with them placing 5th, 6th and out of contention for APAC challengers. This loss was soon followed with a couple of quick changes with the exit of Scargard from RNT and Ember 2 left soon after. This facilitated the entry of the experienced Blackhawk and the star of Revenant's current lineup, Paradox. RNT were not messing around and wanted to find their groove, but with patience. This, however, turned out to be a brilliant move for the org. Immediately following these changes, they placed first across their next three campaigns straight and were on a roll. Although these were small steps, they were in the right direction. You could see that the core of Wimp, Logista and Blackhawk really funneled the support for the powerhouses Knight Rider and Paradox. They were functioning really well as a team. They finished second in the Sky Esports Pro Invitational as well, but fell just short of a podium finish at the TEC Arena Challenger Series 8 LAN with some rounds that might still haunt them. But after that early successful stint, another spark was needed. And that spark came at the TEC Challenger Series 9, the official off-season Riot event. They zoomed past the qualifiers, made it to the top 8 where the likes of Bleed, Xerxia and Alter Ego were waiting for them. Teams that had never played against them in the past and this is the kind of experience that they were itching for. And they actually surprised everyone. Whilst all of us knew that GE and VLT had the most international experience, no one was looking at RNT to do something as good as they actually did. They were the only Indian team to be as successful against the SEA teams, beating Fancy United, Alter Ego and Xerxia in the group stages, stunning the entire South Asian Valorant audience. Everyone was in total awe of their gameplay and, and all of this came from pure discipline that banked upon their team play. Whilst they did lose to Bleed, VLT and GE, they were seen far more as the South Asian favourites after the group stages had ended. Unfortunately, Fancy were ready for them in the semi-finals as it was a best of five, but even there, Revenant were able to at least pick up a map against them. They ended with a respectable third-fourth finish. And this is when the changes at Revenant started happening that went beyond borders. Bad Love and Logista didn't work out for Revenant anymore as they wanted now to fight for titles and compete internationally for the upcoming year. This is when Josh and Ching joined Revenant's roster, making it really formidable. This roster had firepower and brains as well as experience. 
Whilst Wimp was to leave R&T at the expiry of his contract, he made sure that before he left, at least one trophy would be handed to his name which finally came at the esports.in LAN event. And what a win that was for him and Revenant. But even with the brightest of starts, sometimes things can take the darkest of turns. Starting 2023 off with a trophy and signing one of the most experienced players from VLT right to ace, things were looking really good for Revenant. They had a solid roster, were practicing really well and were ready for everything that the 2023 season had to offer for them. But everything for the Revenant Esports' Valorant lineup was about to change within days. And with that, we catch up to the present. As in, what the hell happened with Revenant Esports? When we waited for months from Nordwind to give us something about the South Asian Challengers League, the teams were talking to Nordwind regarding the contracts, what they would include, what and what not. Whilst it was already public knowledge that Revenant probably didn't sign the contract on time and mostly crossed the deadline, the why of this has been eating up the minds of multiple fans as well as mine. Now, we're not going to know what exactly happened until Revenant themselves issue an official statement or not window, but my speculation would be something pretty simple and plain to the eyesight. Contract issues, legal issues, internal disagreements maybe. There were some rumors floating around about some brands not being allowed on team jerseys due to some clashes they would have. These are the team sponsors. I'll give an example with this instance where you see VLT's players walking out but their left sleeve sponsor being blacked out who are supposedly fan clash. Now fan clash are big sponsors of both VLT as well as Revenant and we've seen that in the past. I've heard stuff about contracts being really tight around some spaces, which I myself am not completely aware of as of right now. These could include player participation, stuff that the org can or cannot say, what they can do and what not because now VCT has become such a big thing. And this entire process was probably just r and trying to work things out with Nordwind to find a middle ground for themselves. Yes, the other team signed. And you may ask when the other teams have signed and didn't have a problem, why shouldn't r and follow the same? Simple answer, maybe the contract just wasn't to their liking. Just because 9 or 10 people like something doesn't mean that the 10th person has to have that to their liking as well. Maybe they have a different preference. We may throw our hate towards them, but what do we actually even know about what's happening in the background? We have no idea about this. They probably wanted some things changed in that contract and I believe, according to my sources, this is still being worked on right now as we speak because both parties want this to happen. Nordwin obviously want one of the top teams of South Asia, Revenant Esports, to participate in their tournament. Why wouldn't they? It makes no sense if they would just boost Seven out of the tournament. That would not help them. Now, all of this brings us back to the main question. Is this the end of Revenant Esports' Valorant journey? No. It definitely, most definitely is not. As far as I know, the team will be sticking together. They will be holding on through the split one. And as we all know that this split one is practically a warm up part of the league. And the real qualification to Ascension is in split two. And I believe Revenant are going to be present there. Revenant 100% have a title challenging roster on their hands. And I'm pretty sure that they're not going to let that go that easily. They will be back. And they will hopefully put out a statement soon enough for us to know what actually happened. But maybe until then, don't throw hate at anybody. Nordwin or r and alike. They're just trying to work things out for the best of their own interests. Patience and discipline has always been r and winning formula. And it probably will be this time too. Give it a little time. Until then, be revenant.